Hello, David Snowpack here from Snowpack Games. I was originally hoping to have the next part in my tutorial series about using Git with uh, projects in the Godot game engine released for today, but unfortunately I got really distracted. I got obsessed with trying to get uh, WebXR working in Godot. And I've actually gotten pretty far on that. Um, it's almost totally working. Let me show you what I've got. So uh, this is Firefox. I'm using this WebXR emulator extension, which lets you test out WebXR apps right in the browser without actually having to put the headset on, which is super convenient. You can see down here, there's a little Oculus Quest, um, and then you can like change its position and press buttons on the controllers and move the controllers around um, to test out that uh, your app is responding correctly to them. So here is the, uh, here's a simple Godot app. You can see it here. It's just a cube with the materials messed up for some reason. Uh, and if we click enter VR, it goes into WebXR mode. And now we see two images for the left and right eye. And if I rotate the little quest in here, you can see the view is rotating. If I move it back and forth, you can see that the, uh, Cube is getting closer, further away. So just simulating what it, how the app would react if the headset was moving. So it looks like it's working a bit more than it actually is in practice. Uh, unfortunately, this currently only works in the emulator. I've also tested it with my Oculus Quest over here. Um, which is great WebXR support. Uh, I've tried a whole bunch of samples uh, of other people's WebXR apps, and it, it works fantastic. Um, but there is a problem with uh, the support that I'm adding for WebXR to Godot uh, with actually writing to the headset. There's some OpenGL voodoo that I can't quite figure out. I'm stuck on right now. And I'm really hoping that someone out there, some OpenGL experts can help me just finish this last bit. Uh, but I'll talk about that more later in the video. Uh, first, I want to talk a little bit about why I'm even trying to do this. Um, because, uh, you know, it's kind of weird making a VR app in a web browser. As you may know, the Quest 2 was announced recently. Um, and there was also the recent change that Facebook made requiring you to log into your Quest with a Facebook account. And so this has kind of gotten people in the VR blogs and YouTube channels and podcasts talking a lot about Facebook as it relates to privacy, uh, Facebook as um, a monopoly, you know, they have the only uh, standalone VR headset, Facebook as the curator for a walled garden since they also um, control very tightly what apps go into the Oculus store. There have been some uh, incidents with commercial game developers who have successful Steam VR games being unable to get their games into the Oculus Quest store because Facebook just says no and doesn't necessarily even tell them why. In reading and watching and listening to all of the information about this, I started thinking a lot about WebXR and like that's a possible way into the walled garden if you're making you know just little hobby things little experimental stuff and you want people to try it um you know you can get them to go visit a web page in their headset which will then load a, a vr experience but there isn't any support for webxr in godot which is my game engine of choice so i started thinking well how hard can it be to add webxr support to godot it turns out pretty hard. <laughs> so I've been working on that for a bunch. Um, there were uh, a number of tricky problems that I've already solved. One of them is that uh, I had to kind of rework the way that the game loop, uh, the main loop, I should say, in Godot in the browser works. Uh, so usually in uh, the main loop for a game engine, you just have an infinite loop that just does iteration after iteration, uh, trying to render as many frames as it can. Uh, but you can't do that in the browser. The browser has sort of like a cooperative multitasking thing. You need to yield control back to the browser periodically for the browser to actually do the things that you've asked it to do. Um, and the way that that's done in Godot is by uh, calling the request animation frame uh, method on the window object and giving it a callback, which then gets called uh, when the browser is about to render its next frame. 
Uh, and then you have the game engine do just one iteration of the main loop, then it yields control back to uh, the web browser and you know gets called again for the next frame. Uh, but when you're doing WebXR, you actually have to use this other request animation frame, the XR session request animation frame, uh, which gives to your callback a special uh, XR frame object that you need to render the frame to the headset. And you actually have to uh, render to that frame within the callback, which means that all of your game engine's rendering needs to happen in that callback too. So uh, I had to rework the way that the main loop is done in Godot once you go into WebXR to switch to this other request animation frame. Um, and the way that I'm doing it is hacky and weird and ugly, but it works. It works. Um, the next big problem I had to solve uh, is that all of the information that your getting from WebXR is in the JavaScript side, which needs to make its way back to the C++ side uh, for Godot to use it. Um, so with mscripten, you can run these little em asm uh, chunks of JavaScript within your C++, and one way to pass data between C++ and JavaScript is to allocate these buffers on the heap and then just assign some data to them. And then you can return the pointer back to C++, which can then use it to assign that data to the Godot objects as needed so that we can, for example, in this case, get the transform for each of the eyes from WebXR, pass it off to uh, Godot, which then will use that to uh, render the, uh, the two, the two uh, viewports for the eyes. Um, so that's all working. The main loop reworked, all of the necessary data passed from WebXR back to Godot, and where I'm stuck is actually rendering uh, the uh, render targets for each of the eyes to the headset. And the way that WebXR wants you to do that is WebXR gives you a GL frame buffer. It's this uh, GL layer frame buffer and it wants you to bind to that buffer and then do all of your rendering and have all of your rendering go to that buffer, which is actually pretty convenient if you're creating a game engine specifically for WebXR um, because you don't actually need to like render uh, like the left eye to a texture and then submit the texture off to the, the headset and then render the right eye to a texture and submit it. You can actually just bind to that frame buffer and do all of your rendering as normal, and it will get rendered to you know each eye. Uh, the problem is that Godot isn't built for WebXR, and in its drawing functions, like binds to different frame buffers all of the time. Like I can't just bind to this frame buffer and then say, okay, Godot, go render the left eye, because in the process of doing that rendering, it will like rebind to a whole bunch of different frame buffers and won't be on the one that we need to render to the headset. So instead, I'm letting the ARVR support in Godot do its thing, which is to render uh, each of the eyes to a texture. And then afterwards, I want to render that texture to uh, the frame buffer that we're given here. And I haven't figured out how to do that. Um, there's this convenient uh, rasterizer blit render target to screen uh, method, which takes uh, the render target, which you know has the texture uh, attached to it, and then renders it to the like default frame buffer, the one for the screen. Um, which I don't want it to do that. I want it to render to this specific frame buffer that I got from WebXR. So I created my own little function, blit render target to current frame buffer, where kind of my idea is we do this bit of JavaScript, which binds to the frame buffer, uh, passes back to us the viewport for uh, this particular eye, which is which part of the frame buffer we want to render that eye to. Um, and then call you know my blit render target to current frame buffer and put it on there. It doesn't work. <laughs> and unfortunately, like my OpenGL skills aren't quite to the point where I think I'm reasonably going to figure this out at least in any short 
period of time. So I'm kind of hoping that some OpenGL experts out there can uh, check out my code. I'm going to put a link to the PR uh, in the description for this video and can maybe suggest some ways that I can get this to work, that I can take this, this texture from the render target and render it to a specific frame buffer in a viewport. Like, I could make a, you know, a, a, a plane and put the texture on it and then put that like in front uh, of the camera and render it to the frame buffer that way. But that seems dumb. Like there has to be a better way to do this. And if I did it that way, like my naive way, I'd have to write like a, a bunch of shaders to do it, which it seems like, you know, this is inside the Godot engine. There should be some feature in the Godot engine that I could take advantage to do this without having to like make some new shaders and write a whole bunch of just like bespoke uh, OpenGL code to do this. So I don't know. If you're an OpenGL expert, if you know the internals of Godot, please let me know. I really want to get this working. It's going to be so cool once it is. Uh, yeah, that's all I've got for today. Thanks. Catch you later.